Tasa, let me ask you this, since it's your world and we're just living in it. How, how, <laughs> how would you like to be introduced? How does one even introduce you? I don't know. I like keep me on my toes, you know, that, like, that's the thing. That's the thing you realize about me. I'm, I'm, I can adjust very easily. Yeah. Like, do you want like order of position? Most snaps played like just here's a weapon. Taysom Hill, maybe that. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Okay. I'm going to say legend. No, the legend, because the legend of Taysom Hill, don't get humble on me. No, don't, don't do legend. Now it got it got stronger this week. Yeah, you are a legend. You're the fifth player, as you well know by now, in NFL history to score 10 plus passing, rushing, and receiving touchdowns. The Pro Football Hall of Fame has your game worn gear forever memorialized now. What does that feel like? You know, um I, I guess I'm I'm not that old, but I feel like I am getting older. I'm a dad of two, and I feel like there are moments where I, I get a little nostalgic and I feel like when I start to hear things like that, I I think back to how it all started and my overall overall like feeling or feeling this week has been just gratitude. You know, I, I never anticipated that my NFL career would go the way that it did. But um, man, there are a lot of things that needed to happen for me to be where I'm at. And I'm grateful for, you know, this organization. I'm grateful for Sean and Mike and you know, DA and Pete, the list goes on and on. Um, but it, it's really just gratitude. You're thankful for Sean. And I heard you at the podium talking about that in DA. And shouldn't you be like, how much credit does Max McCaffrey get? <laughs> yeah, Ma Max was my guy. Um, yeah, I, I mean, the list, like I said, the list goes on and on. You know, you get to those preseason games and yeah. Max was Max was that guy that was just Mr. Reliable for me. Yeah. So. Taste them. We got to tell everybody this story. You, okay. you're, by the way, there's the, what you've done, what you, the reason you're in Canton memorialized, there's only four other players that have ever done that. All four of those dudes are in the hall of fame. Like it is crazy rare air. You were not drafted. You were not drafted. It is the craziest thing. And then Sean Payton is watching a wide receiver named Max McCaffrey, who was signed to the Green Bay Packers, who gave you a home, which also did, just, you know, you got to give them some love. They brought you in and he's watching for a receiver, but he's like, who is this quarterback throwing him the ball? Is that how it went? Yeah. Yeah. That, that's how it went. You know, Sean, Sean, Sean tells the story really well, but as you mentioned, look, I was, I had four season ending injuries in college. And so my expectation coming out of college was, man, I just hoping to get an opportunity and, you know, Green Bay did that for me. And and then to have opportunities in the preseason and, you know, to have a guy like Max that I can throw to as a rookie in the preseason, just trying to, you know, make a roster and make some plays. Um, there were so many things that just fell in line for me. And, um, you know, again, Sean is one of those guys that, man, he sees something and, and he likes it. And um, he created a lot of opportunities for me. So, I really wouldn't be here with a lot of people, but in particular, Sean. Hey, so how did you think it was going to go? I like that you said that you're like, it's not how I expected it to go. What did you, what did you dream would happen? I mean, I played quarterback my entire career, you know, so I played quarterback at BYU. That's, that was the expectation. You know, I, I felt like I had, I had done some good things, you know, uh, in Green Bay and then had an opportunity here in New Orleans and, you know, I had an incredibly unique opportunity to learn from Drew. And I felt like Drew is a guy that, you know, he took me under his wing and he's like a brother to me. And so as I kind of forecasted my career, I I guess I, I couldn't have drawn it up any better, you know, aside from I, I was hoping that I'd always get an opportunity to play quarterback in this league, you know. So um, that was – the hope and you know what I was working towards and and now we're here have you reconciled that or do you still hold out hope I mean your story's not old learn to stop calling yourself an old guy I don't like this <laughs> um no look I I think I, I understand the nature of this league and um I realize you got to take advantage of every opportunity so I haven't ruled anything out you know um but I think the nature of where I'm at right now I I have to allocate time properly what I'm going to be doing. So um, that that's really the challenge right now. And you've inherited the role of 
the most unique player, I think maybe in the NFL, I was trying to think while I was sitting here, I was like, who's more unique or versatile, maybe Ricard, just because he plays defense. I know you want to play quarterback, no thought of like line, like getting out there at safety for you. <laughs> uh, hey, whatever, whatever. I, I know that there have been a few opportunities where, you know, maybe we went into a game with, with a, a, being a little bit light at linebacker and to go. At one point, you know, the coaches came up to me and said, hey, if something happens to so-and-so, be ready. And um, it never happened. Uh, but, you know, we'll see. Would you have embraced that? Oh, my for God. Sure. I was joking. No, no. I mean, for sure. Look, it's like one of those things. Like, what do I have to lose? You know, it's like go go set an edge or, you know, maybe I can go rush, rush the passer at some point. Um, but we'll see. <laughs> Okay, you're like, Cam Jordan, Demario, take a breather. I got this. I mean, I wouldn't put it past you to do that because I think you're such a beautiful lesson on and off the field of what anybody can aspire to. No, so it doesn't even have to be a football fan to say like, don't say no, don't rule. I mean, you said it again, don't rule things out. Don't put limits to what you can do. And even when you're facing adversity, just like a really beautiful message. I know everybody in the locker, they love you. And Sean Payton could not get off the phone about you. He would talk to me for six hours about you if I let him. Mm. Uh, and it's really special and amazing. How does your versatility, your uniqueness, that skill set, special teams, dynamo, tight end, uh, you know, quarterback, how does it help you uh, with, you know, your second child, Bennett now, who's I'm sure making things more interesting than just having the one. Well, I, I think thankfully I, I married a great woman, um, you know, so having a great mom and wife makes makes my job uh, much easier that way. But when you start to talk about titles and things that you do and roles that you play, you know, father and, and husband, you know, are the, the two most important to me. And, you know, it's always a humbling experience when you when you have a kid. Um and, and you realize, you know, how, how much you care and you love for these kids and, you know, the pressure and, ex, you know, that I put on myself to raise a good boy. Um, but that that has been, you know, a highlight of my life to this point. Oh my gosh, you're going to make us cry over here. A perfect answer. <laughs> credit, the wife, credit the wife, credit the wife. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the Saints team as a whole. You play a role on all sides, maybe even defense one day. Who knows? But this squad is number one, number one, top spot in the NFC South. You love to see it. And this is for the first time since week 17, way back in 2020. There have been ups and downs. I don't know if we've seen like the true identity of this team shine through. What is this team made of? Yeah, you know, I, I think um, I, th this team, this team has been through a lot the last few years, you know, and having been here for seven years, I've, I've seen a lot of change. And as I look back through the last couple of years, I feel like it's a team that has great leadership. You know, it's a team that's, that's been through a lot and I would say resilient, you know, and, and dating back to a few years, we had a ton of injuries. And I know that there was conversations about that of how many different starters we had throughout a season. And I look at where we're at now and, you know, I, I felt like we were we were struggling offensively early in the year. And I look to our last few weeks and um, I would say it's a resilient squad. You know, it's a it's a team that hasn't gotten down. It's it's a team that is willing to put their head down and, and do the work. And, uh, you know, that's that's why we've we've been successful as of late. And speaking of ups and downs and resiliency, this matchup, I don't even want to say the name of the team. Cause you've got this team and they've got this like, you know, sexy storyline with their quarterback. Speaking of something, you know, you know, you never know what the future holds or with anybody, Josh Jobs mm -hmm. and what he's doing. Um, you know, this is a team I'm not going to say rhymes with Schmini Schmierkel. There have been some, <laughs> I mean, tell you some, I know Stefan's not there anymore, but there have been some, and I love, I back the Saints. So I, I sort of know this a little bit. There's, there's been some tough battles uh, against Minnesota. What do you think about when you see that logo? Yeah, you know, um, there, 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 there's a lot of history there, but overall, I, I, I respect the program, you know, so much. It's a great football team, and um, got a lot of respect for, you know, their their staff and their players and and everything else. But to your point, you know, they've ended they've ended a few seasons too early for us over the years, and um, but I, I think as you get ready for this week of preparation. You know, you know, it's a game that you have to be ready for and it's a great football team. 
I was talking to Demario earlier this week and Cam Jordan was on my show a couple of weeks ago and Cam, I was telling Cam, like, I think this is the best defense you've ever had and been a part of it. Here's these statistics. And, I'll, and he, he's like, okay, I don't care. I don't care. I just want to ring. And he's said this to me for six years in a row. What is the pressure different? Cause you, you know, you guys have some young cats, but you have a lot of veterans on this team as well. What's the pressure level like really? Yeah, you know, it's, that's a great question. I would say that I, I haven't really thought a ton about that. Um, you know, I I feel like having played with, with Drew for so long, um, man, that was a guy that, that you had so much respect for that had been doing it for so long that I felt a ton of pressure as a young player in this league to do my part, you know, Um and now as I look in, in year seven and look, there's been no uh, secret about Cam's mindset, tomorrow's mindset and where they're at in their career. And, um, you know, I, I love those guys and, and how they lead. And and I would say that same pressure that I felt as a young player playing with Drew offensively, um, you know, I, I feel that today. I feel that for Cam. I feel that for Demario. I feel that, frankly, for myself. And, um you know, there's there's just things you can't replicate. And um, we're all trying to recreate some of those teams that we've been a part of here and ultimately, you know, get to the Super Bowl. I think Derek feels that pressure. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, he, he's a player that's played a lot of football, you know. Mm -hmm. So as you think about, you know, your career, his career or whatever, what's like what's the last thing that you want to be able to do? And you talk about being a part of history. Um, you know, I, I just had a conversation or, you know, just saw a couple vets, you know, mm -hmm. that they walked out to the practice field and there's a banner hung hung in the practice facility with every player's name on that, you know, and you you become part of history. So, you know, I don't know if you want to call pressure or, you know, whatever it is you know i think awareness you know, awareness of the preciousness of every game yeah yeah i think that's fair and i and you know i i think for sure derek feels that you know um i think any competitive player is going to feel that uh i i read somewhere that he said that he expected you to be like angry or something angry or uh what did he say did you, did you see this quote before he met you derek yeah, Derek said he expected you to be like an angry meathead or something. Did you not see that? <laughs> I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that. Just before. because of like your violent running style and all yeah. that. But then he was saying that he was ple he pleasantly found out that you're like the best teammate ever, kind, smiling, and whatever. Um, you two get along pretty well. Derek's been great. You Amazing. Know, Derek, Derek has been has been really good. You know, he's. I mean, I've I've got a ton of respect for Derek. You know, I've been able to watch him play from afar and been a big fan of his you know, through the years and now having the opportunity to get to know him and um, play with him, you know, respect him more. He is a great person, but I'll tell you in the short, whatever, I guess it's week 10, but um, yeah. I, I love his competitiveness and I, I've been in the huddle with him and I've been a part of, you know, games where like, I know at the end of the day, the only thing he cares about is winning football games. And, and I felt that. I love that. Anything else you want to talk about? I think that's great. That's it. No. You're good. <laughs> you, you tell me. Nothing. I don't know. I mean, I feel like we covered. It. I just think the Vikings thing is like one of those. You guys get through that. I can't imagine in that locker room with so many vets what that confidence would do for you guys. But you guys just have to keep doing what you're doing right now. Look, everything's been been amazing. Yeah, you know, I I think offensively, as I as I look through throughout the season. I just feel like as I look at drives or as I think about drives early in the year, there was always like a play that stopped the drive. And I think the last few weeks we've played really clean football. We've, we've executed really well. Penalties are down. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you talk about momentum and confidence and, and what that does. I feel like, you know, that momentum thing right now is starting to go. And, um, you know, this is a good football team. We're getting ready to play. And as, as you mentioned, to go win, go play in that stadium to get a win going into a bye week. Um, you know, oh, yeah. that, that is a lot for us. Uh, you, you sound like a coach, Taysom. 
<laughs> uh, I don't know. No, I'm, I'm I'm not a coach, you know, but um sound like one. Is that anywhere in your anticipated future? I bet you could do it. You know, um it's a lot. You, you, you never say never, but um you you talked about family earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I know the time commitment that goes into to doing that job well. And man, it'd be tough for me to ask my family to continue to make all these sacrifices. You know, they've made a lot of sacrifices for me to pursue this. And but you never say never. And I'm never gonna say never. So maybe we'll see. You and Drew team up, coach an NFL team. So it's an equal time thing on both of you. So it's half the time between the two of you. You guys get along so well. Imagine getting to be a head coach in the National Football League and beating Sean Payton's ass one week. <laughs> Early window game, week seven. Who can, like? Wouldn't that be amazing? That would be on. that would be amazing. I already know Sean. Sean would be so fired up. You know. <laughs> who do you hear more from, Drew Brees or Sean Payton? Ah, uh, Drew for sure. Yeah, Drew for Good. sure. Does he ever yeah. come around the team or is it like emotional? Yeah. Kind of, oh, does he? That's cool. He, yeah, he comes around and, you know, locker rooms changed quite a bit over the years. But, um, you know, as I mentioned, Drew, Drew's like a brother to me and yeah. get, we, we get together. I see him pretty much every off season and um, he's been a great, a great resource early in my career, but he's, you know, that resource is, is still been there and, um, you know, he's, he's missed. That's for sure. Yeah, I mean, he, was, he of course, has missed. And then, but you did the locker room change because you lost two yahoos. You lost Sean and you lost Mark Ingram. Like, it's probably like a library in there these days, no? Uh, well, yeah, you got a personality like Mark and then Sean, you know, that that changes things. But um, that Cam still. Yeah, we still got Cam. And, you know, we got a great locker room. We got a great locker room. But, you know, things have changed quite a bit. I just have a feeling by week coming week 11, which I forgot about. That's a pretty nice week to have a bye week. Y'all are healthy clicking. I heard the word momentum, clean playing, um, not a lot of mistakes. Go kill them. That's all I'll say. Also, I'll just say this. The Saints 18 and one taste them when you get seven or more carries. Did you know that? I mean, yeah, it's it's hard not to hear about that. That's that. Um, I have I have heard it. Sure, it just sounds sounds kind of like a simple fix, right? You know, trading the <laughs> tight end title for the running back title just for a little bit. Just saying, just saying. You know, um, I've learned I've learned throughout my careers. You know, you you control the things that that you control, and you know, my mindset is to take advantage of every opportunity I get. You know, and um, that's what I try to do. And that's why your stuff's hanging at the Hall of Fame right now. Taysom, yeah. congrats on all the success. And, the, you know, this is still just a chapter and a long story. I can't wait to see what happens next. Thank you very much. Thanks, Taysom.